So I was a tad optimistic. I thought, hey, maybe the break might be a good idea, you know, makes everyone want to rewatch the show. Ah, I was wrong. No one's fucking talking about it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Invincible Season 2. For those of you who didn't know it ended, it actually ended a couple of weeks ago now. I've been meaning to talk about it, but I've just been so amazed at the lacking amount of discourse for this season. And yes, I know Fallout just came out, but there was nothing about Invincible beforehand. And when you look back on how much of an internet culture smash that was last time, or the first season, it is depressing to see how little anyone is talking about it because this season was great. If anything, it's probably better in some aspects. Maybe not in the grandiose grandeur of it and the ending doesn't have as big of a wool as it did, but the overall product is far better. And I want to make a comparison that might be viewed as low-hanging fruit. The first season of Invincible is like the second season of The Boys and then the second season of Invincible is like the third season of The Boys. That's the best way I'm going to describe it because both of those seasons have very, very similar structures in terms of where their climax and their grand hitting episodes are. Season 2 follows the events of Mark and his family after everything that happened with Omni Man. We're seeing the effects of what Omni Man's betrayal has done not only to Mark's family but to everyone he worked with. To Cecil, to the Guardians, to the world, everything. And on top of that we are seeing the repercussions of Mark's involvement with his father, as well as him trying to make up for being his father's son. To focus first on Mark, his story, both with his mom, the repercussions of what happened with his dad, as well as his relationship with Amber, which they just kind of conveniently do kind of a an uno reverse on that whole relationship. They saw just how terribly handled that character was in the last season, and they try to overcorrect it almost to the point where like that whole kind of cliffhanger with the two of them is just wiped from existence. And the tension and kind of the, ah, the, the sort of the weird chemistry they had is gone and replaced with a much more reliable, more reasonable relationship. And some people might find that a bit slow because it, it really, truly it is. There are some bits where you're like, okay, I know how this is going to end. Could we just get there? When it does get there, it is still as impactful as it would have been, but it took maybe a tad bit long to get there, but it was still well done. It was still well voice acted, which this show, once again, for hiring a shit ton of celebrities, all of them do fantastic work. And that's something to be said because as we've seen, there can be times where big name actors come in to voice people and they suck. But every single person in this show is fantastic. I could not see Cecil being done by anyone else except Walter Coggins. I couldn't see Mark Grayson doing any being done by anyone else except by Steve Ewan. I couldn't see Rex being done by anyone other than Jason Mad oh god, I can't pronounce his name. Crazy cop guy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He actually does a great turn with his character. He actually becomes a relatable likable character and that is reflected with a lot of the side characters. Everyone from Debbie to Donald has massive amount of development. The side stories are tremendous. You are interested in every single side story that comes up as this season goes along. If there is one that you might not be as interested in, it's kind of Mark. And it's not because that what he's ha what's happening to him isn't interesting, it's because it's being dragged out. And it didn't help with that break either, which I find kind of ridiculous now thinking about it because I watched the first four episodes and then when the thing when we came back, I watched the first four episodes again. But that's something that I can say that I really like about this show is it's very rewatchable. I have rewatched the first season multiple times. I think I've watched it about four times in total at this point because it's so enjoyable and I'll definitely rewatch the second season again. You are constantly interested in what's going on with everyone. If anything, Marks is just maybe sometimes we're going over the same thing between his want to be in college, which I mean, you gotta choose at this point, but you have to either be committed to school or you have to be committed to the superhero thing. It's not gonna work to do both. And that kind of plays into some stuff that the audience is gonna be like, why haven't you figured this out yet? And some of these things I feel are there for filler, maybe, 
and also more so to give that relatability to Mark. And it kind of comes to a head, especially the end. I liked the finale. I liked everything that was done, especially with uh, a certain character. Really well done. The whole effect of that, extremely well done. It really makes Invincible a relatable superhero. It makes him a reasonable one. He's not doing these grandiose kind of deeds without consequence. He's not a perfect being. He has flaws. He is human in some ways. And I like that. I loved how well they did it. So in the end, I'm actually going to say I really enjoyed season two. I enjoyed it more overall than one. One still had the two tier episodes being the first and the last. There's no episode in season two that hits as well, but it's still pretty close for a lot of And some of them happen in different spots. Like Alan has some episodes. <laughs> Seth Rogen's character has some episodes that made me audibly gasp. That's how good this second season is. And I am very, very excited to see what the third season does. But in the end, my rating for Invincible season two is a six out of seven. This is fantastic superhero content. This is fantastic superhero storytelling and animation, and it deserves to be watched. I'm very excited to see how they do with season three. However, I imagine Amazon has taken note of how this split thing was received, so they're not going to do that this time. So we might be waiting another two to three years. I will say if they wanted anything to do in terms of to help with the budget, especially to work more into the animation, they do need to drop some of the big name voice actors. I know I just said that there's a ton of big name guys and they all do fan like fantastically well. That's great. That's rare, and it's awesome to see. However, that does eat into the budget. And if you go with more voice actors, you definitely can open up a few more dollars to get that animation done a little bit quicker, and to have that animation be done a little bit more solid. I love that little bit too, by the way, where they showed how they fake uh, animation where they have like the hand covered or they show wide shots while dialogue's going on to help fill in the space. That was great. I, I thought that was the best fucking meta bit about the entire show. But in the end, guys, those are my thoughts about it. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say. Please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, guys, hope you're doing well. I'll see you guys next time.